Hello, everyone. Welcome to this appointment with the Cloud Financial Council. And today we are speaking about cloud security, especially uh, we have the honor of having with us today uh, Mariana Carroll, who's a cloud advisor and trainer. And we're going to go through a checklist for competent cloud security management. Mariana is an enthusiastic technology advisor and academic. So you will enjoy this webinar because she's definitely has a passion for consulting and training services and solution around emerging technologies in general. She consults on major projects for large corporates across the globe and she's advising on cutting edge research, insight and solution with a strong focus on Africa, but I will say that she has experience all around the world because she is working for already for years with Deloitte Consulting and so she's definitely uh, all around the globe expert in uh, technology and cloud computing. Mariana as well did a PhD in IT governance and risk management and is a regular guest lecturer at the South Africa leading universities. Mariana is as well in the ISACA uh, South Africa board and uh, her research interests include emerging technology, IT management, IT governance, IT strategies, and IT effectiveness. So she's an eminent speaker. You will enjoy this webinar because she's an author and she's especially uh, expert in topics like cloud computing, virtualization, and IT auditing. That's very good. Thank you so much, Tristano. Well, guys, I am so, so grateful and absolutely delighted for you to have joined us on this webinar. Tristana and the Cloud Financial Council, thank you so very much for inviting me to actually speak. Um, it's really a great honor to me. How fantastic that technology advancements of our age um, actually enables us to connect from all around the globe. It is such a privilege, and I'm really super excited that we can take some time out um, I think of our busy schedules to just talk about some new technology, some trends, um, and I think some of the massive changes and opportunities that's currently presented. Um, it is really so interesting to me how quickly the world around us just change. Um, and, I, and I truly believe that sometimes it's such a privilege to just be able to sit back for an hour to reflect and hopefully obtain some new perspectives on the things that could ultimately change the way we live, I think the way we operate, the way we conduct our work, and I think ultimately actually the way we connect to each other. So with that being said <laughs> as an introduction, let's start off with some background and um, I'm just checking to see if my slides will actually continue to move over. Okay, there we go. Um, so we'll start off with some background um, just on what is the current state of cloud security. I think you all will agree with me that we live in a rapidly changing world where there is really a constant need to cut costs. I think that is always on the top of any agenda of any person that you speak to. Um, and I think where investments in IT is just no longer about technology, but really adding value um, to the business um, and really bringing value to new ways of working um, and ultimately enabling our businesses to be more effective, to be more efficient and to, add, to be agile, to really respond to those specific and critical needs that our customers would have. The digital revolution is driving business innovation and growth, yet it is also exposing us to new and emerging risks and threats. And I think that's exactly the, the conundrum that we're sitting with. We have on the one end all these incredibly new, innovative and amazing technologies, whereas on the other hand, we have all these new threats and risks and this whole new world um, that we are not always familiar with. I think the threat landscape has changed significantly and I think the business case for better and more mature security is actually at this stage bigger than ever before. 
I think all organizations, whether they are small or large, public or private, or local or international for that matter, we all really understand that information is a strategic asset and that technology is nowadays a major contributor to our business success. Information and data, I think, is really the lifeblood of everything that connects people within our organizations and I think even ultimately nations across the globe. Um, technology really enables more and more information to transverse within the cyberspace. The internet, mobility, social platforms are all delivered through cloud-based services um, and are now shared um, across a connected world. We are really living in this interconnection, but unfortunately the threats to confidentiality, I think the integrity and sometimes the availability of information is also increasing at the same rate. Cyber attacks, we hear about hacktivists, we hear about criminal syndicates, nation states, um, I think they are all new to this interconnected world and they really can deny or disrupt um, our access to information. They can really steal and manipulate and they can really change the perceptions of people towards information. So understanding all of this and this changing landscape, how then will we actually ensure reliable and secure IT services? Because I think that's ultimately what we all want to hear tonight. With IT getting more in strength and pervasive to our businesses, I think management really needs to pay special attention on how the business relies on IT and how IT enables execution against business strategies. I think based on some of the discussions that I recently had with a number of CIOs, ultimately everything comes down to how do we deliver value back to, um, to business through the use of technology. That brings to me or to my mind, um, the principle of IT governance, where management is ultimately responsible to ensure that IT creates value to the business, but very importantly, while managing the IT-related risks. The challenge for most professionals, I think, in security and governance in IT, however, comes to really and truly understand the risks associated, especially with new emerging technologies in this new digital interconnected world that we live in. And I think especially when we combine the forces of mobile, social, analytics, the internet of things, things like wearables, all running in the cloud and ultimately wrapped within cybersecurity. I think cloud computing, and that's why I'm so passionate about cloud computing, is really the glue in this digital world, combining the different aspects to deliver IT services and resources literally anytime and anywhere. I think it really and truly transformed the way um, we have access to IT services. So before we move on, I think let's briefly make sure we are all around, uh, what, uh, around what cloud computing is. And I don't want to bore you with boring definitions. Um, I think, as we've just said, we live in a digital world and we can literally just Google and know <laughs> what a definition of anything and everything is. Um, but on the other hand, it's really so scary. When I was actually doing some research a while back, um, I just entered the cl a definition for cloud within my Google um, the, the little file key and I, I was really thinking that it would give me like a cloud is a visible mass of tiny condensed water droplets in the sky um, but to my stunning amazement um, I actually didn't get that um, it actually throwed out cloud is a network of remote servers hosted on the internet and used to store, manage and process data instead of local servers on your personal computers. How crazy is that? Um, I know it's a little bit funny, but I guess it's proving my point um, that it's really that we are in this interconnected world where we have a number of solutions and really intelligent systems that are learning our behaviors on a daily basis. The number of cloud service solutions and services are really growing at a staggering rate. And I think more and more organizations are leveraging cloud advantages, such as quick and easy access to innovative best of breed IT solutions. For instance, if we think about private cloud, um, 
That is where we have tools that provide scalability and self-services on proprietary um, architectures. We can think about um, vendors like IBM, HP and VMware. Um, if we look, um, for instance, in the, the, the platform as a service space, a collection of tools needed for application development, we think about the likes of Google, Force.com and Windows Azure. Even, I think, from a personal perspective, personal cloud is really growing, um, where we have provided host capabilities from storage to media streaming to collaboration to really accessing personal accounts like iCloud or Amazon Cloud or Google Apps for that matter. When organizations consider adopting cloud solutions, I think the agile nature of cloud computing raises many questions around whether we really understand the risks and the complexities surrounding these cloud deployments. And for me, that is really the big red flag when it comes to adoption of any emerging technologies. Management is ultimately responsible to actually protect and safeguard data. Whether the data is hosted on-premise or off-premise at the cloud provider. In, in the recent discussions I had with the CIOs, we um, conduct these CIO labs where we take um, new, a, new, a new person that would transform into the role of the CIO into these labs and really sit with them to understand priorities and alignment with business. Um, so we, we ask them multiple questions. And around the, the things that really concerns them, the things that really keeps them awake at night, I think top of mind keep popping up, and that's around governance, risk, compliance, and regulation. They really have questions around what are the GRC and our specific considerations and challenges, especially when it comes to cloud environments. How do we really ensure our data is secure and that we can trust in the confidentiality, the availability, and the integrity of our data. Um, and, I think, and I then think another question that nowadays um, we, we get more and more of is really about understanding how do we audit or provide assurance around these cloud environments. I think all of these are really extremely valid questions as we don't want to find ourselves months down the implementation or integration journey and all of a sudden now realize that we didn't consider the key risks, that we didn't look at compliance and regulation requirements, and that our organization is now in a vulnerable state. It is really my hope that this webinar will help you to answer some of these questions. Um, but before we speak about a solution, let's just briefly look at some of the statistics um, that's out there. So what is the current state of cloud computing? Based on a survey that was conducted by the Computer World um, on around 182 IT professionals, technology leaders said that they're striving to maintain or improve service levels. I think um, efficient and best like increased services are really on top of mind. At the same time, they're also seeking to generate new revenue streams and really become a catalyst to the organization. Um, or to just increase existing revenue streams. And then we are also seeing a significant move towards IT becoming more aligned to business, as I said previously. Um, IT really starting to play that catalyst role where IT is perceived as a business partner rather than just a provider of technology services. I think, as you all may know, um, I, the IT guys were usually the ones down in the basement that just needs to keep the lights on. So cloud computing is really showing no signs of slowing down and came out in the study as the top five priority for IT departments um, as some of the key priorities that they are currently working on. Technology leaders also indicated that spending on new cloud initiatives remain on the, the upswing. In terms of organizations and their cloud transition, 29% of the respondents confirmed that they already moved some enterprise applications to the cloud with more to come, while 7% said that they're in the process of migrating mission critical systems to the environment. That is actually quite interesting to me. And then on the flip side, 20% of respondents actually reported that they are not moving to the cloud at all. 
Um, now, this actually does raise a question in my mind as to how educated are users. I know in the past we have experienced that people sometimes doesn't perhaps fully grasp what cloud services truly mean, even though they are using it daily. It was so scary to me the other day when I was presenting at a conference, and before we started, I asked the audience, so who of you, by show of hands, can please indicate um, you or your organizations are actually utilizing cloud computing. And it was like, I think only two or three hands that actually went up. And it was so strange to me. And when I started explaining some of the concepts of, you know what, like using Microsoft 365 is actually a cloud-based solution, all of a sudden more and more hands were raised. So I still believe that there is a way to go in terms of education. And this is actually also supported by CompTIA State of the Cloud 2015 report showing that about 40% of IT professionals can't yet differentiate clearly between public and, and private cloud. Um, I know it is a bit, a, a bit weird and it doesn't make sense in, in my mind, but I truly think there's still some education curve um, that we need to get over. Um, furthering the increased adoption of cloud, um, there was also an, a recent IDC um, multi-client study, um, they call it the Cloud View 2016. They indicated much higher percentages, where they actually said 58% of the organizations surveyed indicated adoption of cloud, and that comes to like a 24% increase in the last um, 14 months. When we look at the current cloud market, a recent Gartner report projected the worldwide um, cloud public market to hit 204 billion in the next year. That is quite significant. Um, they think about um, this growth in terms of IT departments moving away from legacy IT, organizations pursuing a digital business strategy, um, IT budgets that's actually growing, which is really good news, a reduction in complexity across the IT stacks, and then there's absolute need for agility um, to get um, solutions to customers much quicker. So while there's solid growth across public cloud services, Gartner also noted the highest growth this year will come from infrastructure as a service, and that should reach almost around 22.4 billion by the end of the year. Cloud application services like software as a service are also expected to, to, to grow, as is cloud management and security services and cloud application infrastructure services. The IDC also indicated that hybrid cloud is predicted to be the go-to deployment model, um, which I think is nothing new um, in the cloud market, and moving to cloud storage um, is definitely increasing as well. So I think let's um, next move on to what the stats indicate around the greatest cloud adoption challenges or barriers. It is very interesting to me that when we started um, with cloud computing discussions in 2010 um, and even before, I think if we ever spoke about cloud challenges or barriers, security was always number one. It was always listed as security is definitely the thing to, to, to watch out for. Um, followed by things like, oh, I don't want to lose control, vendor immaturity, lack of organizational readiness, and, a, and I think really a lack of understanding of the risks and costs involved at this stage. I think although security remains a top contender, change management, shadow IT, third-party risk, integration, and skill shortage are all now also showing up as key discussion points on, on the agenda. In the Computer World Forecast Survey, budget constraints actually top the list of leadership challenges identified. Security came in second, um, and I think there is definitely um, this year even a bigger focus on security because of all these serious corporate hacks um, that we hear so often about. The Right Scale 2016 set of the cloud report list lack of resources or expertise as the number one barrier to cloud adoption and followed closely by security. And I think again, just speaking to a number of CIOs, 
um, there's really a fear around how the IT department of the future will look like and how do we now already start thinking about how do we adequately structure our department and the resources that we have to make sure that we will be able to actually um, have the right capabilities and skills to deliver on what the business actually expect of us. I think um, as we will later on in the presentation also see, there is really a massive lack in terms of especially cloud and security skills, um, which in my mind is, is not a good thing, but it does present us with a great opportunity um, to actually start skilling ourselves up um, in these spaces. So in conclusion, um, just in terms of the state of cloud computing, what are the key takeaways? I think firstly, we can expect to see increased spending on security and cloud computing, especially as um, budgets are changing slightly and um, more funds are allocated to technology um, and as businesses are really seeing and realizing the value that technology can bring to the organization. And then secondly, this massive skills shortage or shortfall in terms of cloud computing and security needs. I think just to um, iterate the point again, cloud and distributed computing skills were rated the hottest skill of 2015 on LinkedIn. That is quite cool, I think. Um, and then again, the computer world forecast surveillance security as a top five driver for increased headcount. Um, and cloud, um, especially software as a service and security skills, both um, basically were on top of the 15 skills to be sought after in 2016. I think you will agree with me at this stage, and it perhaps goes actually without saying that this topic that we are discussing here today is actually highly relevant. I think cloud security and addressing the skills gap are increasingly pertinent topics to be familiar with, and applied correctly, you can set yourself really apart from the rest. This could well be, I think, the actual start to becoming that transformational, value-adding technology partner business so longs for and a step towards a very rewarding and successful career. I know we also have some, some trainers um, here on the call today and I think especially from a training perspective, um, these stats really makes us excited to think that there's a whole market out there um, and the incredible responsibility we have to upskill people um, and to really enable them to deliver to business these transformational value-adding um, technologies that, that we talk about. So I think um, at this point, so perhaps as part of the background, um, let's just look at what are some of the common gaps and how can we address um, cloud security. Um, that being said, actually, but just before we look at these common gaps, we have looked at what cloud computing, um, how we define that. But let's just very briefly also look at what security means within the context of today. I think in th very briefly and on a very, very high level, security is really all about protecting information and information systems from unauthorized access, the use, disclosure, disruption, and modification or destruction of information. I think as I've mentioned before, data and information is really becoming the currency um, of, of our world today. So for us to really make sure that we protect the biggest value and the biggest asset of our organization is really increasingly becoming more and more important. When we look at security, I think three things really stands out, key aspects, and we call them CIA, so the confidentiality um, of information, making sure there's no unauthorized access or disclosure to, to our information or data, the integrity of our information, making sure there's proper guarding um, against improper modification or destruction, especially when we start thinking about big data and analytics and making sure that we have the right information to make the right business decisions. And then the A setting for availability, making sure that we have um, access to our information that is timely and reliable. 
I think it's also just important to note that when we talk about information and data, we are really thinking about it um, in whatever state it is, whether it's storage, processing, or whether it's in transit, and also throughout the entire life cycle of information, from initiation to the actual destruction of information at the end. Okay, so with that being said, let's look at what are some of the common gaps or issues when it comes to adopting cloud solutions and ensuring adequate security or this protection over our information and our information systems. Cloud computing has been described as a disruptive technology, as you all would be aware of, being the convergence of computing technology, communication capabilities, and approaches to IT service delivery. I think the introduction of new technologies may apply pressures on our organizations in which enterprise architectures have evolved primarily around the internally provision and management of technology solutions and the enablement of processes to support technology are really defined within our internal structures. Whereas with this move to cloud, te um, cloud technologies and this digital world, I think that is changing completely and that also then introduced some new risks um, to this landscape. It is therefore critical for our organizational structures, processes and procedures and also roles and responsibilities to be aligned to these changes in this landscape um, and for our organizations and our IT departments to still be able to uh, um, deliver value um, from cloud solutions and that we can ultimately trust our cloud services. When we think about um, some of the key considerations when it comes to security, I think there's really six that, that stands out. Um, the one being third party risk. So enterprises are dependent on cloud provider controls. So that changed the focus and the way, um, whereas traditionally we, we were in control um, over our risks um, and control practices. Cloud computing almost also create this single target for attack um, where cloud providers present a, a big target um, where all the data is, is hosted. There's also some complexity around hybrid models outside of our traditional walls where walled enterprises is replaced by a hybrid more complicated technology environment where we really need to think about integration and orchestration of our services. Then this whole concept and big hoo-ha around shadow IT where business using cloud with or without adequately understanding the risk of implementing effective controls or in cases where we've heard these horror stories where if IT doesn't deliver quickly enough business just goes out and swap their credit cards to acquire the services that they actually need. Um, I think this is really presenting a massive, massive risk um, to our organizations at this stage. The fifth one is really looking around resource capability constraints. We're having access to competent technical support, um, especially I think enterprise architecture management and cloud vendor management skills. Um, are in a shortfall as, as we've spoken about before. And then lastly, just looking at control scap and really making sure that we still have adequate enterprise risk management um, implemented within our environments. I think it is so easy to think that once you've outsourced a service or you just buy a specific service, that you don't have to take responsibility for that anymore. And that's, um, I think, as we know from a governance perspective, definitely not true. As pertinent as these considerations and challenges may seem, the thing that really excites me, I think, is the flip side. So we always see cloud security as this big dark cloud um, across our heads. But I think um, if we really sit back and think about it, um, security and especially cloud security can really promise many opportunities for us um, in terms of actual enhanced security. 
and it really makes sense if you think about it. Cloud providers are actually in the business of IT. They should have their focus on global best practices and sometimes actually have better security than you can ever afford within your own organization. I think cloud providers are also better equipped for the fight. They have the numbers and they have the resources to, to throw to it. They, it also gives us the advantage to actually free up some of our resources and especially our experts to focus on what's really core to our organization and really um, outsource some of those non-core capabilities. I think when it comes to cloud security, perhaps one of the most critical considerations is that of responsibility. And that's really, I think, sometimes where a lot of people um, do not really understand exactly how to approach this. Management are too often, I think, reluctant enough to believe, as I said before, that when a solution is outsourced, their responsibility um, is also transferred um, to the vendor. But that is not true. I think it is critical and of utmost importance to understand where our responsibility lies. And I think perhaps just to help us, we can ask ourselves questions like how is security achieved for my cloud architecture, my systems, my applications, my related networks or physical controls? Um, what is the level of privacy protection that I need? Can my vendor or can I ultimately need legal compliance, technology and privacy law, tax and other regulation um, requirements? Are there complexities around the, the jurisdiction and where my cloud data is actually stored? Um, do you have sufficient service level agreements in place? Do you really understand who owns the data? How is it used? Who actually have access to your information? And I think all these are really valid and extremely important questions. Um, we really need to select to, to be selecting the best cloud solution depending on the level of management control and understanding of the benefit and the risk um, as, a, as a value driver. The risks are really based and measured according on the type of service model that is applicable to the organization. And organizations um, really have control based on the different stacks and the different services and deployment models within um, this cloud space. Um, for instance, if we look at the software as a service model, the consumer does not manage or control the underlying cloud infrastructure or any of the application functionality for that matter, um, with the possible exception perhaps of some limited user access configuration. And that means that from a cloud secu from a security perspective, um, in the SaaS environment, they would have less control and the cloud provider would actually have more responsibility. I think lastly, um, we can move on um, just to really looking at and understanding adequate cloud security management. And for me, a key thing here to highlight is just that in this risk-based um, enterprise world, I think we should consider it as a journey. It's not a quick, um, just we arrive at the end. It really starts with the essentials, a bottom-up, I think, risk-based approach, where we first establish the specific cloud-related needs for, for instance, legal compliance, technology and privacy laws, tax and other regulations, um, and really ensuring that all those um, requirements are met. Then only do we tackle complexities around different jurisdictions, um, for instance, cross-border transfer of information, some of the privacy laws and acts that might apply to our business. Then we ensure that our specific cloud security requirements are aligned with our existing enterprise risk management frameworks, really understanding the specific risks related to cloud-based solutions and giving special attention to data. Um, again, as I said before, who owns the data, how is it used, who is responsible for that, and do you actually have adequate controls in place to ensure confidentiality, integrity, and availability of your cloud um, data. I think taking a risk-based approach will assist you in understanding the security-specific risks associated with cloud computing, 
and your organization's ability to ultimately manage those risks. Over time, I think ensure that adequate and effective controls are implemented to mitigate evolving threats by discerning the context relevant and the required response to some of these risks um, that, that you have identified. And again, throughout the entire value chain. Um, and also looking at your cloud providers, your users of your cloud services, and also third party vendors or brokers within this entire cloud environment. Okay, so with the context um, that, that we just got, let's look at some key pointers, especially when it comes to cloud security management. As security and cloud experts, how do we ensure our organization really plan appropriately and ensuring that we take an adequate and effective risk management perspective to the management and adoption of cloud computing. Um, I think I'm quickly, briefly going to explain and give you some insights or some tips, I think, um, just around a high level five step checklist to ensure the application of adequate risk management practices to address security management and decision making for cloud computing specifically within our organizations. So first of all, um, the planning and scoping. So when it comes to planning and scoping, especially around cloud security, I think there's some key questions that, that we need to, to ask. Um, one of those would be, have you identified and mapped all types of cloud deployments within your IT universe? Do you really understand them across the different service models, um, SaaS, PaaS, EAS, and, and, and all of the others? Have you identified all the third parties and documented such relationships within your IT universe alongside some of the descriptions of the type of services, your deployment models, and again, I think highlighting some of the key roles and responsibilities, especially between yourselves um, and your cloud providers. Have you adequately developed a framework to assess all risks related to your cloud deployments? Coming back to some of the, the considerations um, uh, based on the slide that we had where it differs based on private cloud versus public cloud um, and the different types of um, security that applies to it. Have you optimally allocated resources and capabilities and do you understand structures to adequately manage third parties and cloud vendors? Have you considered different types of audits for higher risk deployments, for instance, for instance third party monitoring and um, really understanding the security from a cloud vendor perspective as well? Um, do you understand the boundaries and the scope um, within your IT environment and do you adequately understand the business processes and the alignment of IT um, to your organization. I think again key is what are those key business drivers, objectives, needs and challenges. Start off with that question then linking that back to why you actually adopted cloud and how cloud is actually improving your business then looking at does your cloud service model and delivery models really best suited these needs and then starting to really unpack a strategy around security and risk. So step two then looks at developing a cloud strategy specifically and here again we can really think about developing a cloud strategy um, in terms of I think on a high level two key things. We want to understand the as-is environment, so what do we currently have, but we also need to put on our glasses and look into the future in terms of the to-be environment and how we would like this environment to be and how we are going to secure this environment in future. Um, based on this as-is versus to-be assessment, there's also three key things that really stands out. So we need to think about risks within our current state. We need to assess the residual risks for high-priority cloud 
um, cloud security services based on our definition and understanding of risk within our enterprise. And then lastly, translate all of this into developing um, initial plans and a strategic roadmap, especially around um, security and management of our cloud solutions. Um, perhaps just some things to consider when it comes to um, evaluating your current state. Um, that really talks about things like scanning your cloud usage for um, shadow IT, um, as we've spoken about shadow IT before. Reviewing your cloud strategy for business usage, for instance, or reviewing on a regular basis um, some applicable risks or regulatory, like looking at regulations that might, for instance, change within your organization of re really truly determining and understanding security and compliance requirements within your environment. If we think about the to be state, um, we then start thinking about things like, do my cloud provider really and truly provide the right type of controls? Do I have access to ensure that those controls are adequate and effective? Um, do you scan high priority cloud providers to determine that they do have existing controls in, pl in place? Um, and do you actually understand and assess the overall security risk within your organization? I think all of these are valid questions that then flows into developing a strategic roadmap for cloud security specifically. Um, as a step three, we can then develop a cloud security reference architecture or blueprint as, as some might want to, to call it. Um, and that's really, again, I think looking at it from a process perspective, um, starting off with strategy requirements. So looking at scoping and planning, looking at your current capabilities. So your strategy, your gov governance, your operations, um, and understanding existing capabilities, but also aligning with security gaps and strategy for your cloud environment specifically. And then also identifying appropriate capabilities and controls to meet very specific security requirements. Um, I think when we think about capability design and solution architecture, especially from a security, cloud security perspective, things to consider is really governance, security, vigilance, resilience, and then very, very important within our cloud space is service level agreements. Um, I think ultimately that is the one piece of paper that connects us to our cloud provider and um, that we can hold them accountable for in terms of really understanding the different roles and responsibilities, um, but also ensuring adequate delivering of services. Then number four, implementation. So now that we have developed, we have formalized, and now we implement um, security and governance capabilities to manage cloud security risks. And that is really around implementing the right controls and um, making sure that we do cover all our cloud security risks um, adequately. Um, and again, I think that really comes down to some key considerations, especially when it comes to cloud security. And I'm just very brief here, I, I see we are running um, slightly low on time, but very quickly just going to mention a few things that really stands out and some key questions um, that, that you need to ask when it comes to cloud security. So from a governance and risk management perspective, how do you govern and measure enterprise risks introduced by cloud computing? When you think about legal and compliance requirements, can you meet the need for legal compliance, technology and privacy laws and tax issues? Are you adhering to internal security policies or external standards and regulations? When we think about data management and control, for instance, um, and I think I have mentioned this before, but who owns the data? Um, is it your company or is it the cloud provider? How is it used? Who is responsible for the data? Um, how is access controlled to the data? Um, how do you make sure that you keep your CIA, your confidentiality, integrity, and availability over your cloud data? 
if we think about the infrastructure, how is security achieved for the cloud infrastructure, the systems, the applications, and the related networks and physical locations? Do you truly understand where your information is ultimately hosted? Um, things like identity and access management becomes incredibly important. How do we control access to different cloud um, solutions and environments, and who is accountable to actually allocate these types of rights and access? Resiliency and availability, do we really meet um, disaster recovery and um, business continuity requirements when using cloud providers? Do we really understand that um, our cloud provider have ad actually has adequate um, controls in place to ensure availability? Um, another key consideration is where do your cloud provider um, actually back up their data and does that produce a new or introduce a new risk into your organization. Management and control is also very important. So how do we achieve management and control over cloud assets, projects, incidents, changes, um, operations and especially cloud vendors. So these are just some questions and some things that, that you might want to consider, especially when it comes to, to cloud security and making sure that we have adequate um, controls in place to mitigate um, the risks that are very relevant and specifically applicable to cloud environments. I think um, just in terms of another checklist item that, that you can you can put to it is to when you do consider going the cloud route is to ask your cloud provider specifically for an ISO 3402 report that is the old SAS 70 type reports um, making sure that they do have adequate security in place and that their controls are working effectively. Then um, I think lastly um, is just a continuous review and monitoring of um, our cloud environment, making sure that um, we do identify interim deliverables, initial findings, um, that we are aware of security risks, that we are aware of changes in our environment, that we have ongoing relationships with our stakeholders, and that ultimately, um, we are considering automated, continuous monitoring to make sure that we are always on top of key risks and how we address those within our cloud environments. So with all of that being said, I hope you, you were able to make some notes and um, some, some key questions and, and you know, perhaps just make a list of some, some checklists and things that, that you need to, to consider. Um, but one question that might pop up in your mind is what competencies are needed to assess, evaluate and implement effective cloud security? And just very briefly, and I think on a very high level, um, it is important to have knowledge, I think, um, of technology concepts like cloud computing, IT security, um, especially around data networks, applications and architecture, risk management concepts, IT governance com concepts, um, regulation, compliance, auditing and assurance concepts. Um, it's also, I think, um, important for a person that steps into a cloud security management role to be able to evaluate business processes and IT technology landscapes, to be able to identify risks and evaluate controls and really understanding risk assessments, gap analysis, business impact analysis and so forth. And then also to advise and make recommendations um, to key stakeholders. Um, and then I think perhaps uh, not as clear cut, but effective communication skills. Um, I think ultimately within our organizations, it's all about relationships um, and really connecting, getting alignment, getting the right buy-in and support from your cloud, cloud site, um, from all your key stakeholders um, to ensure that your cloud security program is actually effective and that you do report um, on, on your key metrics. So linking on to the concept of what typical con competencies are required, let's very quickly just um, have a, a look at how you can then certify yourself um, as a cloud security manager. 
So training and development. Um, as we have seen thus far, I think the potential of cloud services and solutions are really limitless. And um, I think the same actually applies to a career in cloud security. There are multiple new job opportunities, there are multiple new business models, um, things are changing so quickly um, that I think the opportunities are really just endless and that really, really also just excite me. Um, I think both from a practitioner's perspective, because um, it creates new opportunities for us to really step up and really do some new innovative things, but also from a trainer perspective in terms of really adding value and um, helping people to skill themselves up um, in especially these new and emerging technologies. Um, so I think one of the, the things that you might want to consider if cloud security is really high on your agenda um, is a career as a cloud security professional or a cloud security trainer and as you would know the CCC offers training and certification to actually help you um, to, to skill up um, on this specific area. Um, I think as Tristana actually also mentioned in the beginning it is vendor neutral which does make this certification a really really good to have and it is also based on best practices. Um, if we think about the cloud security professional, the specific um, training course from CCC, um, it was really designed in mind um, thinking about people um, I think in the professions of governance, risk and compliance, um, thinking about IT audit auditors and compliance specialists and also IT security professionals and cloud computing specialists. So those are just some of the um, typical, I think, professions that might be interested in the cloud security management certification specifically. Um, the Professional Cloud Security Manager um, Certification has recently been updated and um, it's actually currently under re review. So what you currently see here in terms of some of the modules are actually a brand new beta release um, and you can expect to see the, the brand new course coming out very soon. Um, just very briefly in terms of the course itself, I don't want to bore you going into the details um, within the modules. I think um, you all have access to the CCC website and um, they actually have a lot of detail on the website itself. So you can go into this and, and really read up on the different um, topics um, within each of the modules. But it does cover security governance and risk management um, in quite a bit of detail in module two. It also looked at a uh, detailed understanding around security threats and challenges um, around cloud computing specifically um, when it comes to compliance, when it comes to operations and also physical security. Um, it, it does also um, speak about in module four around security management in cloud computing, looking at specifically things like identity and access management, data classification, data security life cycles and forensics um, in, in cloud environments. And um, perhaps just as a side note, I've seen Trisono has made available to you as a handout um, the professional cloud security manager syllabus. So you can see that in your right hand panel um, in your GoToWebinar um, slideshow. Then moving on to module four, um, it also specifically addresses things like legal, contractual and operational monitoring. And I would just very briefly want to stop there because I think from a cloud perspective and especially uh, ensuring proper security, um, civil server agreements are so important. Um, legal contracts, that's ultimately the link between yourself and the cloud provider and making sure that your cloud that you have access to to make sure that your cloud provider has sufficient controls in place. So this is an incredibly important module. Then number six would look at network security, which again thinking about cyber and the digital world that we live in, um, network security is incredibly important, looking at things like vulnerability and patch management and security architectures. 
Um, we also cover things like business continued disaster recovery and performance planning, um, and then ultimately also looking at things like advanced cloud security management, where we look at application programming interfaces, um, and also security planning, um, things like controls and auditing, some of the things that we've actually been discussing today, and then ultimately the evolution of cloud security. Um, just, I think, in the interest of time, I'm not going to go into too much detail. You can read up on the course and the exam details as part of the handout um, that is provided um, as well. And then, I think, just lastly in, um, in, in this section, looking at if you are interested in building a career as a cloud security management manager, I think this is a great, great, great reference point for you to, to look at. Um, I think there's basically three key streams. Um, people either very proficient in cloud computing or in IT auditing or then in security and merging these into a competency I think is incredibly powerful. Um, so on this slide you can basically just see some of the interlinking depending on where you're at and where you're coming from, perhaps some of the complementary um, certifications that you can think about um, to adopt um, going into and onto this journey of becoming a cloud security manager. So I think as we're hindering towards the end of this presentation, let's lastly have a very quick glance of what to expect in the future. I think going back to the Computer World Forecast Survey that we started off with, um, when asked what technologies are likely to have an impact in the next three to five years, the survey respondents actually chose cloud computing and specifically software as a service by a wide margin followed by self-service IT, predictive analytics, and the Internet of Things. So I think just in terms of what is next, cloud computing will definitely continue to reshape enterprise IT, um, and that is also according to the IDC, where they actually predicted um, public cloud services to grow exponentially to around about 127 billion by 2018. If we think about some of the, the key things that, that's highlighted, hybrid clouds is predicted to be the go-to deployment model. Security will remain a top concern, so it's good to be trained in security. Cloud native applications will become the norm. Barriers to cloud adoption will actually reduce, which is incredibly good news. Um, and then I'm really truly of the opinion that I think in a few years from now, we will not have such intense cloud-specific discussions, but the cloud will really just be an accepted mainstream technology. I think almost just part of life, the way IT services are delivered. Almost similar, I think, to what happened to the internet discussion. There, at first, was a lot of hype, um, but nowadays, I think it's just part of, part, of, part of life as we actually know it. And I believe the discussion will turn to data. I think understanding the, the true cost of inadequately protecting your company's biggest asset um, is a big risk to, risk to take. Um, it is therefore, I think, incredibly important for us to invest some time and resources on the things that matter most. Um, so I think take an uh, actual building block approach, one step at a time, little by little, focusing on the essence and the core. Um, and when we think about this building block approach, perhaps starting off um, by understanding key business priorities, key initiatives, objectives and needs of the business, and really ensuring that the IT and technology department and your skills and capabilities are truly aligned um, and informed um, so that you can really become that value-adding business partner. Mm -hmm. um, I think cloud computing and se um, security respectively and together are great conversation starters and a way to really showcase to the business that you are proactive um, in making sure that business are aligned to IT service delivery. Um, and here I think things like agile, being having scalable resources on demand just comes to mind. 
Secondly, um, governance, risk compliance and regulation. I think be proactive in understanding the changes in the regulatory landscape, especially when it comes to emerging technologies and um, cross-border transfer of information. Um, also understand the ever-increasing threat landscape, as we have spoken about today, in this interconnected digital world, um, and really making sure that once you understand your cloud-specific risks, that those ones are adequately mitigate, mitigated. And then lastly, fill the skills gap. Invest in yourself. I think learn and leverage lessons from cloud computing use cases and partners in similar industries and groups. Engage with cloud technology vendors and let them know your specific requirements. And then I think when it comes to training and certification, um, very quickly, I've just read like recently an interesting article. It's called Cloud Skills Certification Can Add Zeros to Your Paycheck. But I think the, the ultimate was that um, certification, especially in, in, in areas where there's a skills gap, um, could really differentiate you um, within your market. Um, and within your profession. Back in 2012, a study was done by IDC. Um, it was actually commissioned by Microsoft, but they found that 1.7 million cloud computing jobs were unfilled across the globe. Um, and that was predicted by 2015, um, that only 7 million of those, um, well, there, there would be 7 million unfilled vacancies within the cloud space. So I think that being said, there's definitely a massive opportunity for us to move into the space of cloud security. I think as we said in the beginning of the presentation, the challenge for most professional in security and governance in IT comes with the understanding of risks, issues and trade-offs presented by introducing emerging technologies in this new digital interconnected world. And I truly believe that the cloud security management certification can help us bridge that gap to accelerate into a full and exciting um, new career. I think the bottom line is just an, a last remark from my side. Um, to understand the impact of cloud computing and security on organizations, to understand the risks as introduced, and to make sure that we adequately mitigate, mitigate those risks. Okay, uh, Mariana, I don't see question coming in, so I believe that we can close the webinar for today. Um, I would like to thank you again. I would like to thank the audience again. I think it was a really, really good explanation of, of what are the good skills and the needed skills to close in order to have a proper cost security approach. Uh, Mariana, do you have any other comments? No, Tristan, I don't. Thank you so very much um, for joining the webinar again. Um, I think we are living in extraordinary times and I think the opportunities are really endless. So thank you so much for the, for the opportunity and thank you for joining us. Um, it was great to spend time with you guys.